In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the domain of an inverse function. So we have the regular function 3x minus 4. If we were to draw a rough sketch of the graph of this function, it would look something like this. It has a y-intercept of negative 4 and a slope of positive 3. So this is a generic shape of that graph. The domain ranges from negative infinity to infinity. The domain represents the x values of the function that it can have. And x could be anything. The range has to do with the y values. y can be anything in this graph. There's no restrictions. Now, in order for this function to have an inverse function, it must be a one-to-one -one function, which means that it must pass the horizontal line test. It can only touch the horizontal line at one point. So because this function is one-to-one, -one, the inverse function exists. Now let's go ahead and find the inverse function of f. So replace f with y, and then switch x and y, and then solve for y. If we add four to both sides, we get that x plus four is equal to three y. Dividing both sides by 3, we get this. So now we're going to replace y with the inverse function symbol. So the inverse function is x plus 4 over 3. Now what you need to know is that the domain of the inverse function is the range. And the range of the inverse function is the domain. So for this particular video, we're going to focus on finding the domain of the inverse function. And the answer for this example is all real numbers. It's negative infinity to infinity. Now let's consider another problem. So let's say we have the function x squared minus 3. Find the domain of the inverse function. Now let's draw a rough sketch of the graph of that function. x squared is a parabola that opens upward, but it's been shifted three units down. So it's going to look like this. And it has a y-intercept of negative 3. Now, this particular function does not have an inverse function because it does not pass the horizontal line test. It touches it at two points. So we can't find an inverse function for this unless we restrict the domain. So what we're going to do is we're only going to focus, we're going to create a new f of x. We're only going to use the right side of that function. So we're going to restrict the domain of f of x to x is equal to or greater than 0. So we still have a y-intercept of negative 3, but we don't have anything on the left side. Now, this new restricted f has an inverse function because it passes the horizontal line test. So we could find the domain of the inverse function for this particular function. But before we do that, let's find the domain and range. So we restrict the domain to x being equal to or greater than 0. So that means from 0 to infinity. And the range is also restricted as well. Focusing on the y values, the lowest y value is negative 3. The highest is infinity. Now keep in mind, the range of f of x is the domain of the inverse function. So the answer for this problem is what we see here. But let's confirm that. Let's find the inverse function. Let's replace f of x with y, and then let's switch x and y, and then let's solve for y. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And to get y by itself, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. 
and then let's replace y with the inverse function symbol. So the inverse function is the square root of x plus 3. If we were to graph that, the square root of x looks like this. But this has been shifted 3 units to the left. So it's going to start at negative 3. And it's going to go towards the right. So the blue line is f, the red line is the inverse function. When you graph f and the inverse of f, they reflect about the line y equals x. So that's how you know if you did it correctly. Now, when dealing with radical functions, the inside of the radical has to be equal to or greater than 0. It can't be negative. Otherwise, you'll get an imaginary number. So subtracting both sides by 3, we get that x is equal to or greater than uh, negative 3. For the range, I need to correct this because I put positive 3 for the range, but it's actually, it should be negative 3. I missed that negative sign. But nevertheless, this is the answer. So the domain for the inverse function is from negative 3 to infinity. I just forgot my negative 3 here. It's very easy to forget a negative sign. Now, if you want to find a range of the inverse function, it's going to be the domain of the regular function. So that's 0 to infinity. And we can see that's the case with a square root function. Focusing on the red line, the lowest y value is 0, and this will continue to increase to infinity. So it's from 0 to infinity. The red line never goes below the x-axis. So it doesn't have any negative y values. Therefore, this is the domain for the inverse of f, and that's the range for it. Now, let's consider another example. So let's say f of x is equal to the square root of 8 minus 2x. Go ahead and find the domain of the inverse function. But let's focus on the regular function first. We know that the inside part has to be equal to or greater than 0. Subtracting both sides by 8, we get this. And then if we divide by negative 2, negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4. And since we're dividing by a negative number, we need to change the direction of the inequality. So the domain for f is negative infinity to 4, with 4 being included. If you were to sketch this graph, it would have an x-intercept of 4. If you have a positive sign in front of it, it's going to be above the x-axis. And it's going to go this way. So we can see why the domain will be from negative infinity to 4. Now looking at the range, the lowest y value is 0. The highest, it can continue going up to infinity. So the range is 0 to infinity which means this is our answer for the problem. That's going to be the domain of the inverse function. Let's find the inverse function. By the way, this function is one-to-one. -one. It passes the horizontal line test, so the inverse function exists. Let's replace f of x with y, and then let's switch x and y. Now let's square both sides. If we take the square of both sides, the square root will disappear on the right side. Now, I'm going to add 2y to both sides, and I'm going to subtract both sides by x squared. When you do this, it has the effect of moving the 2y from the right to the left. It'll change from negative 2y to positive 2y. Moving x squared to the other side makes it change from positive x squared to negative x squared. Now, dividing both sides by 2, we get that y 
is 8 minus x squared over 2. So the inverse function is this, but I'm going to rewrite it as 8 over 2 is 4, and then minus x squared over 2, which is the same as 1 half x squared. We could write that like this, negative 1 half x squared plus 4. It makes it easier to graph. So x squared is typically a graph that opens upward. But since we're dealing with negative x squared, we know that opens downward. But it's been shifted up 4 units. So it should start somewhere over here. And if we didn't restrict this function, it will look something like this. Uh, that's going to be a rough sketch. But this function is going to be restricted. Because if we don't, it's not a one-to-one -one function. So what we need is only the right side of this graph. And if we think about y, the range of f of x is 0 to infinity. Therefore, the domain must be restricted to that. It's going to be 0 to infinity. So we only need the right side of the inverse function. And we could see if we were to graph y equals x, the red line and the blue line, they reflect about the line y equals x. So we have to restrict the domain. The range of the inverse function is the domain of the original function, negative infinity to 4. So if we follow the blue line, this is going to go from negative infinity. And if we follow it up, it's going to stop at 4. When you plug in 0 into this function, you get 4. So the range is from negative infinity to 4. But this is the answer we're looking for the domain of the inverse function. It's the range of the regular function, which is 0 to infinity. Now let's work on one more problem. This time we're going to focus on a rational function. Let's say f of x is 3x plus 2 divided by 5x minus 4. Go ahead and find the domain of the inverse function. Now, when dealing with rational functions, you can't have a 0 in the denominator of the fraction. So we could say that 5x minus 4 cannot be 0. Add in 4 to both sides, we get this. Dividing by 5, we get that x can't be 4 over 5. It could be anything else but that. So for f, the domain is going to be from negative infinity to 4 over 5, and then union 4 over 5 to infinity. x could be anything except 4 over 5. Now what about the range? So in this function, we have the numerator, which is degree 1, and the denominator is a linear equation with degree 1 as well. When you have a rational function like this, where the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator, the horizontal asymptote is simply going to be the ratio of the coefficients of the degree of the term with the highest degree. So in this case, it's going to be 3 over 5. That's the horizontal asymptote. What you need to know is that the y value for this function can be anything except the horizontal asymptote. The graph will get close to the horizontal asymptote, but it won't touch it. So since this is the horizontal asymptote, y will never be that value. Therefore, the range is going to be negative infinity to 3 over 5, union 3 over 5 to infinity. So in order to write the range of a function, a rational function, you need to remove the horizontal asymptote. So if this is for f, then the inverse function has the domain negative infinity to 3 over 5 union 3 over 5 to infinity. 
the range of the regular function becomes the domain of the inverse function. So this is the answer that we're looking for. Now let's find the inverse function. So let's replace f of x with y and then let's switch x and y. And then let's solve for y. So I'm going to put x over 1 and then we're going to cross multiply. So this is going to give us 1 times 3y plus 2 and that is going to equal x times 5y minus 4. Now let's distribute x to 5y minus 4. So it's 3y plus 2 is equal to 5xy minus 4x. I'm going to move this to the other side and this to the left side. So we have 3y minus 5xy is equal to negative 2 minus 4x. I probably should have did it a different way, but we can still get the right answer. Now I'm going to factor out y. So this is going to be 3 minus 5x is equal to negative 2 minus 4x. And then I'm going to divide by 3 minus 5x. So y is negative 2 minus 4x over 3 minus 5x. I'm going to mu multiply the top and bottom by negative 1 just to make it look better. So y is going to be 4x plus 2. So the negative 5x will become positive 5x, and the positive 3 will become negative 3. So now it looks a lot better. And so we can write this as the inverse of f. Now for the inverse function, we can have a 0 in the bottom. So if we set that not equal to 0, and if we add 3, then divide by 5, we get that x can't be 3 over 5. And so we could see that in the domain for the inverse function. 3 over 5 was removed, which is the horizontal asymptote. So that confirms that we have the right answer. By the way, as a side note, if you're wondering why we need to remove the horizontal asymptote, from the range of the original function, besides the fact that it's been removed in the domain of the inverse function, and the fact that the graph never touches it, another way to see why we need to remove it is by plugging in this value into f and seeing what happens. If we were to replace y with 3 over 5 and try to solve for x, notice that we won't get a value for x. Let's cross multiply. So we have 5 times 3x plus 2 equal 3 times 5x minus 4. So distributing the 5, we get 15x plus 10. And distributing the 3, we get 15x minus 12. Now, if we subtract both sides by 15x, x completely disappears. And we're left with 10 on the left, negative 12 on the right, and these two do not equal in value, so it doesn't work. Therefore, there is no x value that will produce a y value of 3 over 5. And that's why it's the horizontal asymptote, and that's why it must be removed from the range of f. And that's also why it doesn't exist in the domain of f, I mean the domain of the inverse function of f. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to find the domain of an inverse function, and the key is by finding the range of the original function.